A lot of people are talking about the recent sell-off in tech, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to sneak in a little bit of financial education. So a very quick video just to talk through how options could be affecting the volatility in tech stocks. And as usual, this is not a recommendation. If you want advice tailored to your specific circumstances, seek independent financial advice. I think it's a bit of a storm in a teacup. So this upper panel here where I am is the return on Apple since the beginning of this year. And you can see that the sell-off is only about 10%, but it's been a great run. Just look at those stock prices. And the same is true of Tesla. If you look at the returns over the last three days, they've come off by about 16% but it's still been an incredible run. And if we look at the returns for the whole of the NASDAQ 100, you can see that mostly it's in the red over the last week. And the stocks which have performed incredibly well over recent history, you know, the big fang stocks, are the ones which have sold off quite a lot. So those are the ones at the bottom in red. But if instead of looking at the last week, we look at the last year, just look at Tesla up 830% at the top there. And only a handful of tech stocks, which are in the NASDAQ 100, have made a loss over the last year. So it's really important to get these things in perspective. And if you do that, then the pullback's been quite limited. And there hasn't really been a triggering event other than people probably deciding to take profits. But there's a great story in the FT, which may make this a little bit more interesting. And the story is from Kana Inagaki, Katie Martin, Robert Smith and Robin Wigglesworth. And the story is that SoftBank, which is a Japanese company, has been buying very large numbers of call options and very large sizes of call options on stocks in the NASDAQ. So you're probably wondering, how does that affect the actual stocks themselves? Why would buying call options, these weird derivatives, affect a whole index? Well, let's see exactly how that could happen. And to understand that, you have to understand what we mean by a call option, because that's what SoftBank has been buying. A call option gives you a right, but not an obligation, to buy a stock at a fixed price at a fixed time in the future. Why would you do that? Well, it costs a lot less to buy the call option than it does to buy the stock. And if you're right and the price of the stock goes up by a certain amount, which we'll see in a moment, then you can make a huge profit but of course, there's a very high risk that the price will go down and then you'll lose 100% of your investment. So it's certainly not true that options are for people who are new to investment. You really have to understand how they work before you invest in options. So let's say you wanted to buy call options on Apple, a SoftBank has been buying. Now, the price of Apple as of Friday was just over $120. So what I could do is buy a three-month option which gives me the right to buy Apple stock for $140. Now, if the price of Apple does go up to $140 and beyond, actually it would have to go quite a bit beyond, then I can make a profit with a very small down payment of the option premium. So the price you'd pay for that option, which is just beneath me here, is about $7, much less than $120, which is what you'd pay for Apple stock right now. So this is the payoff graph for what you'd be paid in three months time when it's the expiry day of the Apple option. Now the strike price of the option is $140, which is here, but you have to go a little bit above $140, in fact $7 above $140, in order for the investor to break even. So you'd have to reach above $147 for Apple's share price in order to break even. But then once you do break even, there's unlimited upside above that level. So that's what you're hoping is going to happen as the buyer of the call option. And of course, you only had to pay $7 to get all of this unlimited upside. And your downside is limited to the option premium which you paid, which is $7. If the price of Apple at expiry is less than the break-even, then you're going to make a very large loss. And if it's below the strike price, then you'll lose 100% of your investment. You'll lose that option premium. But of course, it's a fraction of what we would have paid for a whole stock of Apple. But if you rewind to the present day, the actual payoff right now isn't that kind of hockey stick shape. It's actually a smooth shape because the price of Apple is kind of jumping around. And so you also get some additional value here on top of the hockey stick 
due to volatility. You can think of that as volatility value. So you still start off underwater today by $7, which is what you paid for the option. But if the share price does go up, then obviously you're going to make money and you can always close out the option before expiry if you think it might go down again. So that's the position of the investor in the option, the person who buys the call option. What about the person on the other side of the trade? Now remember that the people who create these call options are called market makers and they're usually investment banks. And investment banks are in a very special position because they create a market in these options. So their job is not to take a directional view. They don't want to be left with lots of call options at the end of the day or lots of put options. They want a flat position. They make their money with the spread between the buying and selling prices of call options or other types of option. What the bank can't do is take a directional view as to what's going to happen to the price of Apple. That's called prop trading and it was seen as too risky and obviously we remember what happened when banks took lots of derivative positions with CDOs. It didn't end well. So this is the position of the market maker who sold you the call option. Notice how everything is reversed. So instead of starting off underwater, they've actually got a positive value today, which is the option premium, which is already in their pocket. So what they want to do is to lock in that option premium without taking a directional view on the underlying stock, which is Apple. But at the moment, you can see they've got a short position because if the share price of Apple increases, they're going to make a loss. So what the investment bank has to do is delta hedge, as it's called. And that means they're going to have to buy stock to neutralize this directional slant for the payoff. So if you buy just the right amount of the underlying stock, which is Apple, then your payoff now looks like this. You've locked in your option premium, which is great. And if the share price increases or decreases by a certain amount, you've still got that locked in premium. If you do take too much of a directional risk, then the risk department or the business prevention unit, as some people lovingly call them, will be standing over you with a stick and saying, reduce your risk, delta hedge. So that's the job of the of the trading desk for derivatives, which is to delta hedge, as it's called, this position so that you create this kind of nice even structure. But now look at the shape of the payoff. If the share price of Apple increases here, you can see that the gradient becomes negative. In other words, we're short. And if we're short, we have to buy more stock. So if the share price goes up, Apple shares go up, we have to buy more. And conversely, if the share price goes down, we're now long, but we can't take a directional position. So in this case, we'd have to sell Apple stock if share prices go down. So this shape of the curve is called negative gamma. It's negative curvature. And it produces this toxic position where if the share price goes up, we have to buy more. And if the share price goes down, we have to sell more. And that means that we're amplifying the market moves by being short gamma. So going back to this story about SoftBank, you can now see that by forcing the market makers into these very large short positions on call options, the underlying hedging is destabilizing markets because the market makers have to buy when share prices rise and that pushes prices up further and they have to sell when prices fall and that pushes prices down further. And that destabilizes markets by amplifying the market moves that we can see normally. Now, the consequence of that is that if you do have a position in these tech stocks alongside SoftBank, then you're going to see a much more volatile market because of the activity of these very large players, the market makers and SoftBank and others on the other side. If you enjoyed that video and you want to support us, then why not join our online community? You get access to all sorts of goodies, such as our online chat application Slack, where you can ask questions of me or any other members of the community. And you get to join our Sunday evening live call, where you get to ask questions of me and I answer them live as best I can. And you get access to a growing video library, which is only available to Patreon supporters. And alongside those videos, you also get notes, which allow you to follow the links and research topics in more detail 
for yourself. So if you do want to support us and get access to all those goodies, just click on the icon for Patreon on the far side of this page. And as always, thank you for listening.